Welcome back to Hardware Unboxed for the final edition of our GPU pricing update series in 2021. It's been a very rough year for anyone looking to upgrade their graphics card or build a new PC for gaming with ridiculously high prices maintained for the entire year and several months at the end of 2020 as well. So for many people, this new generation of GPUs has been a bit of a write-off despite the actual products from a hardware perspective being quite good, which is definitely a bit disappointing. Anyway, our mission to track GPU pricing trends and look at the current market will continue in 2022, but for now, let's see what's been happening in the final months of 2021, which is typically quite busy as it's the holiday season and all. So as I said last month, the expectation is that GPU prices wouldn't change too much as demand for components would be reasonably high during this period. But we also had this strange GPU launch in December, that of the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 2060 12 gigabyte model, which was kind of just pushed out onto the market without much fanfare from NVIDIA. No review sample program, which I guess is usually the case with these sorts of launches and why we haven't taken a look at it yet, but also apparently not that much stock. According to websites such as The Verge, the RTX 2060 12 gigabyte was supposed to launch on December 7th. But even today, as we look at various retailers, the card is basically nowhere to be seen. There's not even a listing for the GPU on Newegg, despite plenty of listings for the regular 6GB variant of the card. Locally here, PC Case Gear and several other retailers don't have any. And in fact, only a single model was seen at just one retailer across all that I looked in Australia, a Zotac model available at Scorptech. It's priced at $1,050 Australian dollars, which is $250 more than 6GB models of the card are selling at the same retailer right now. Other regions are facing the same problem with maybe one retailer offering one model, not that the high price is gonna be drawing in buyers, it's basically just as expensive as some RTX 3060 models. So what is going on here? Why did this GPU launch on December 7th only to not even be listed at most retailers? Well, from speaking to some of our industry contacts, they were actually surprised the RTX 2060 12 gigabyte was going to launch on the 7th, even though this date was being rumored for several weeks beforehand. The information we were receiving was causing us to question those rumors, even though they eventually turned out to be sort of true, and that's for a couple of reasons. Firstly, we were told that actual stock of the RTX 2060 12 gigabyte wasn't expected until late December at the absolute earliest, but more likely in January, which is weeks after the supposed launch date. That initial launch date seems to be more of a statement that hey, you might see some 2060 12 gigabyte models on shelves from today, as a few OEMs do have very small batches of them ready, so just know they aren't fake models. As opposed to a more serious launch like we've seen from RTX 30 series GPUs with more widespread availability that of course sells out immediately on day one. So if you are interested in a 2060 12 gigabyte, you'll probably have to wait until January to see more listings. However, the information we've received also paints a picture of a GPU that gamers probably won't want to buy anyway. One industry contact described the RTX 2060 12 gigabyte to us as a card for mining, in that its price tag, game performance, mining performance, and memory capacity makes much more sense for miners than it does for gamers. It's been hard to pinpoint an exact MSRP, as Nvidia doesn't really have one for this GPU, but as we've seen from current listings, it's getting pretty close to the RTX 3060, despite almost certainly performing well below it. Our data has the RTX 2060 Super about 14% slower than the RTX 3060 on average, as an example. So that's the basics for the RTX 2060 12 gigabyte and why we haven't seen too many of them. The December 7th launch date seems to be more of a paper launch than anything, and the card itself isn't going to be great for gamers, so don't get too excited. There are more Nvidia GPU refreshes on the way as well, with current rumors suggesting an RTX 3070 Ti refresh with 16 gigabytes of memory, and an RTX 3080 refresh with 12 gigabytes of memory. While some rumor sites like video cards are reporting that the launch date for these GPUs is now uncertain, the original rumor suggesting a December 17th announcement also didn't really align with what we're hearing from the start, similar to the RTX 2060 12 gigabyte. I'm not sure where those December 17th rumors originated from, however, we're not expecting to see these until mid to late January at the earliest, which would likely mean a real release in February going on what we've seen with the RTX 2060 12 gigabyte. After that, we're also expecting to see the RTX 3090 Ti and the long-awaited release of the RTX 3050 series for desktops, which have also been rumored for a while now. So that's four 
new NVIDIA GPUs, if you want to call the refresh cards new, expected in the first few months of 2022. We're not really a rumor channel, so we're not going to dive into details on hardware specs or anything like that. I'm sure if you're interested, you can check the usual rumor and leak websites for that sort of stuff. Also expected in the first few months of next year are new lower end GPUs from AMD using their upcoming Navi 24 die. So this would be something like an RX 6500 XT. Alongside the RTX 3050, this should create increased competition in the cheaper parts of the market. Although these days a cheaper GPU costs like $500. So we'll have to temper our expectations a bit here. Both cards will probably have a 200 to $300 MSRP, but then actually cost $500 at retail, which sucks, but that's the current state of things. Things. Intel Arc GPUs aren't too far away either. But that's enough about what we're expecting to happen with GPU launches in the next couple of months, and maybe we'll see some announcements at CES. Now let's take a look at the current GPU market and how that's placed and whether there's been any price movement. As has been the case for many, many months now, cryptocurrency mining continues to be the primary reason for inflated GPU pricing and strong demand, with clear price fluctuations in GPUs following trends in coin prices or mining profitability. That's nothing new, we've talked in depth about this in previous pricing updates, and how supply chain considerations have become less of a factor over time, and certainly aren't the main reason towards the end of this year. Across the last month, the price of the most popular coin for mining, Ethereum, has dropped by 10% and has been sliding overall for a month and a half. During that period, mining difficulty has only increased slightly, and for the last few weeks has basically plateaued, which indicates GPUs aren't being added to the mining pool at as high of a rate as in previous months. Both of these factors tend to be good news for gamers, and in December they've combined to reduce mining profitability by 10-20%, to depending on the GPU going on what to mine's latest data. How has this affected GPU pricing? Well, it's rather interesting this month as it does depend on the sorts of products we are looking at. Nvidia GPU prices haven't changed too much for about six months now. There was a noticeable peak in May, corresponding with a huge boom in crypto, but since then it's been relatively flat as popular coins, mining profitability, and so on have all fluctuated. For example, in the last six months, the RTX 3070 has peaked at about $1,230 new on eBay and has hit $1,100 at the lowest. The RTX 3060 has sat between $690 US and $750 during that same period, so it's largely been consistent. The highest changes have been with the RTX 3090. Specifically for December, as you might expect from what the line chart was showing, the average price hike in December was flat, with some cards falling in price slightly and others rising. Most current generation NVIDIA GPUs remain over double their launch MSRP. However, on the AMD front, it's a bit different when looking at their current generation lineup. While sales volumes are significantly lower for AMD GPUs than Nvidia on eBay, prices have been more volatile and more closely aligned with changes in the crypto market. Take the 6700 XT for example, AMD's competitor to the RTX 3070 and one of the highest volume cards available from Team Red. In the last six months, its price has sat between $730 and $980, which is a much larger range than Nvidia. It's really only the RX 6600 series that has been relatively flat throughout its lifespan. But specifically for December, AMD GPUs have slightly declined in price by low single digit amounts for an average decline of 4%, which is not too bad for the holiday period. I was actually expecting to see an increase here or at best flat GPU prices like with Nvidia. But it seems that Nvidia GPUs are still in higher demand than AMD and with the holiday rush to buy hardware that's expected to some degree as Nvidia still holds significant gamer market share and mind share. The used GPU market has followed a similar trend to AMD GPUs this month. The NVIDIA GeForce RTX 20 series has dropped in price by low single digits, which is better than nothing, but we aren't at the lowest prices seen this year, which occurred in July. NVIDIA's previous generation cards are still priced higher than their launch MSRPs, even though we are talking about used GPUs exclusively here. The GeForce 16 series has also slightly come down in price, and I'd be expecting to see more movement in this market over the coming months as these GPUs go from being current generation products to being replaced by the RTX 3050 and newer items. The GTX 1660 Super, for example, is disgustingly overpriced at $512. However, that sort of price inflation is no different to the RTX 30 series, except we are looking at used GPUs here, which is a bit crazy. The GeForce 10 series continues to be sold for roughly as much as their launch MSRPs on the used market, although prices have come down by 4% on average, which is a positive. 
Like the other sets of used GPUs we've looked at so far, prices have been relatively flat for a few months now, although higher than what we saw in July. So if you did buy a GPU in the middle of the year, you've managed to get the best deal. The Radeon RX 5000 series has been the most popular set of used GPUs for miners due to their incredibly high mining performance relative to their product standing in the gaming market. Prices have been significantly inflated on these cards for months now, but it's also not a surprise to see the largest fall in pricing this month as the GPUs with the highest demand for mining also have the biggest falls in pricing when mining becomes less profitable. The drops here aren't insane or anything, but a 6% price reduction is a trend in the right direction. Then we have AMD's older GPUs, which have also been highly popular for miners, and here prices have fallen by 5% on average. Despite these price drops, the RX 580 is still over $100 more expensive than the GTX 1060 6GB, so gamers after a lower end GPU should be looking more towards Nvidia's offerings than AMD, at least for now. So that does it for this month's GPU pricing update. The news here is actually a little better than I was expecting. Last month I speculated that GPU pricing would still remain quite high in December due to the addition of holiday gamer demand on top of mining demand, but that hasn't materialized to the level I thought it would. Of course, GPUs are still ridiculously expensive, but most graphics cards fell in price by single digit amounts. The main exception here was Nvidia's current generation of GeForce 30 series GPUs, which seems to be taking the brunt of increased demand and doing so without much movement in pricing either way. We've also now been able to get a good look at when the best time for buying a GPU was in 2021, in hindsight of course. Those of you who were lucky to buy in July got the best deals of the year. That was the period when crypto fell sharply after a big rise and miners kind of panic sold some of their hardware. Conversely, if you bought in May during the crypto boom, you got among the worst deals of the year along with the opening few months of 2021. The big question is what happens in 2022? And I'm not sure to be honest. Demand from normal customers is usually lower in the first quarter of the year, but miners are hardly normal customers given GPUs are basically money printers. We're also going to get more GPUs hitting the market, so there's a lot of unknowns there, but it's safe to say we are not going to suddenly have affordable graphics cards anytime soon. Also of concern right now are DDR5 memory prices, although from what I've been told from several OEMs, supply is actually quite good for DDR5 memory and more reliable than DDR4 supply, it's just that the majority of this memory is going to OEMs and not into normal retail channels. I suspect DDR5 pricing will return to normal quicker than GPUs, in line with other components like CPUs and motherboards which are currently selling for basically normal prices. Anyway, that's it for this regular GPU pricing update that we do monthly. If you do enjoy our testing, our analysis of things like that, and of course our reviews, please do consider supporting us on Patreon or Floatplane. You'll be supporting independent testing and also get a bunch of nice little perks, things like our Discord community, our behind the scenes videos, live streams, that sort of thing. Live stream will be coming up very shortly on the channel, so now is a great time to sign up. Anyway, thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.